I'm very privileged to hold this position, to be the Chief Executive of Everton in the community. That privilege comes with an extensive level of responsibility and I remind myself of that each and every day. The participants we have on many of our programmes are so fragile or so vulnerable that we have to get it right. Everton in the community is Everton Football Club's official charity. We were established back in 1988 with an agenda in the first instance to look at combating crime and antisocial behaviour going into areas of high deprivation in Liverpool city region. Significantly in the last five years we've changed our programme. We're supplying over 53 social programmes to the local communities. We have wonderful participants, particularly the staff in Everton in the community, the desire and determination to make a difference each and every day is second to none. We have a very clear structure to our programmes, to having very specific themed areas of activity. Our first theme is youth engagement and that's working on social inclusion projects. So we have our Safe Hands programme, which is working with young offenders who are coming out of secure care. And our Kicks programme, which is really where the very first programme started off for community projects. So working with Merseyside Police to reduce antisocial behaviour and crime in areas of high deprivation. Our second theme is education. One of the key common factors that were across all of our programmes is that people had had a really poor experience with education. We have a fantastic apprenticeship programme. We also were the first club in the Premier League to establish its first school. So we have Everton Free School. Another element of our work is sport development. We work with Premier League on underrepresented sports in the Olympics as well as all the sport development focus around football. And we have the largest and most successful disability team in the UK. Our next team is Health. We've developed our memory loss programmes, bringing people who are living with memory loss um, and inviting them into the club. We have a homelessness league as well, a homeless league, where we work with the White Chapel Centre. We have um, a fundraising team um, which completes our, our structure and we have a programme called Everton Giving. Everton Giving will support over 2,000 local charities a year. We link that to the players, the first team, the academy, the under 21s, where we'll have players who will go out into the community alongside our community staff and support those activities or ventures that we're doing. It was difficult growing up really. I had brothers and sisters, it was like sister fibrosis. I was like really into me football, like playing football on Saturday for the schools. They were all like happy memories, football for me. So it was a real big part of my life even then. By the age of like 12, I started getting introduced to like alcohol, drugs and things like that. The hardest drug obviously on the streets of Liverpool was heroin. First time I took that I was 16, that was it, I was up straight away. I was homeless, in and out of hospitals, sleeping rough for about 18 years. 18 years of my life. I've slept in bin sheds and everything. I've slept in bus stops, doorways. What happened, right? He used to come and pick me up to come and play for the Whitechapel football team. The and obviously Everton are in partnership with the Whitechapel. Met Henry and he see me, get my life back on track. It was a starting point. It was coming to the end, end of that, I'd been clean for about 40 years. I started as a volunteer, doing half a day on the dementia. I'm near every day. I'm an official tour guide. I work the matches. I met his mum when I was young, met our son. Didn't work out. It was like a drug feud relationship anyway. I said, uh, I haven't really got a relationship with my lad. Without them even knowing him at the football club. Little things that they've done brought our relationship on. And I've got him staying on for the first time. I think he's actually stayed overnight with me since he was about four years of age. Give me my life back really, haven't you? When you look at it, that's like the, the top of it. They've given me my life back by giving me this opportunity to work and do things. That's a dream. When I've been growing up, I've had a bad day in school because things have been happening at home. My dad had issues with alcohol. He was aggressive towards my mum. It was hard to see him drinking keep drinking. I was always getting into trouble in school and then I was getting sent home and my future ain't looking good. It came up for me to go into Everton Free School. It was like a breath of fresh air. My life just turned around then and really positive things were happening to me and I was getting 
the best opportunities. A kid my age can dream of. I was coaching, I was meeting players. How I am now, my confidence is just shot right up because I get more and more responsibility. It, it makes me grow as a person. My mum's just so proud of me because I'm doing things with such a big club like Everton. Like any kid my age would dream of doing the things I'm doing with the club. I was born in Toxteth, there till I was about three. I was always in the park with my dad and we was always outdoors and we had barbecues and stuff in the summer. And me, senior school, I was going through a lot of personal struggles with, with my mum. Me and my mum, we was just like, argue. I was concentrating on all the bad stuff in my life rather than the good stuff. And then obviously when I got with Everton, I was taught to focus on the happy things and through doing volunteering, I was just in the office one day and they were just saying, oh, they're recruiting for apprentices. You do your work, but you do coursework as well, so you're getting a qualification. It was ridiculous how quick it all happens as well. Going from a volunteer with the Kicks programme to becoming an apprentice. Now, my role is Administration's Operations Assistant. So I work for Denise, the Deputy Chief, Chief Executive, as her apprentice PA. You can do it. No matter where you've come from, you can do something good for yourself. That's for you. I've came so far and Everton's helped me so much, I couldn't possibly go back to the way I was. And I think that that's the same for a lot of people here as well. I started on the railway in 1970, trainee train driver, then became train driver, then I became a manager. I suddenly just shut down one day. My wife said, what's wrong with you? And I said, I don't know. I got to see a psychiatrist and he says, young onset dementia, Alzheimer's. And it just felt as if your whole world had collapsed. I found out you get this superpower when you get dementia. You can go into a room full of people, they'll talk around you, about you, and over you. So you've got the ability to become invisible. And it used to be the loneliest place in the world. So I explained what it was like from my point of view and what it was like to actually have dementia. I started coming to Everton in the community pass on the memories, start to get my confidence back again. This group has actually saved my life. When you were stuck in the house in one little chair, you come out and then you become friends and then you become a community. Pass on the memories is so unique and everyone looks to ever in the community. Pass on the memories as, as the catalyst to what their group should be. When I was younger in school, I was on a bike and the bike policeman must have thought that I robbed the bike. Pull my seat back and then someone like went head first into the car. My head got stuck in between like the wheelchair and the wheel. They said like I was lucky, one of the luckiest person to be alive that day. And I was good on my mates who were dealing and stuff. First it was just weed and then I went into crack and heroin. The police have seen us in there, pulled us. There was weed in that in the car. They took us in for a strip search and I had the strip search, he found it. He knew I was going to go to jail. I got 18 months for the white and brown because I went guilty. That got took down to 10. But like, I wouldn't really have come out and tried for the job because you know, I didn't really think I'd get one because of my convictions. Everton have come and seen me on a visit and said that we've got safe hands, what you can interact with, you can work with them in here and then you can do stuff with safe hands. And I'll give it a shot. I got out and just started going there doing activities and stuff as a participant and then one of the workers said to me that this job's going for safe hands and apprenticeships got shortlisted for an interview with them but I got it good feeling to get something and to tell my parents and my family like that I've got a job with everything as well better than I being employed better than the life what I was living before I can coach I've got more qualifications I feel like a bit more grown up now really as a person I had chicken pox when I was two and they found out when I was four that I had a hearing impairment and since then I've all hearing aids. I was 11 when I first started playing football, got into a, a boys team, went on to playing for Everton. 
about 13, I think it was. Everything, sport, I mean, many different ways, funding, training, what I mean, different competitions, tournaments. With everything, you were training more and stuff like that, it just builds your confidence up and the coaches around you are really positive. Steve Johnson put me through to the England manager, who said, come for trials and stuff, so I went along for trials ever since I've been playing for England. When I first joined England, I was 15. Going to the World Cup made me the youngest player ever to play for England. When I first started playing for Everton, we were in national leagues, which we won. I've got Disability Player of the Year twice. And from Everton, with England, I've been to European Championships, World Cups, Death Olympics. This year, I got top goal scorer in Bulgaria. It's made me more competitive, like don't give up. Well, it gave me the confidence that I never had, really. So being deaf, you sort of lack confidence and belief in yourself. And everything, he brought that out of me and told me I can basically achieve what I want to achieve. There are very, very important stories. Um, you can imagine every single first team player, uh, the staff, we are very proud ambassadors of that work that the charity is doing. Everton in the community brings that bridge and we feel extremely humble and I'm very, very proud of the work that the charity is doing and, and the response that we get from everyone uh, affected by it. We get out there as, as often as we can and to as many people as we can and just try and bring that little bit of happiness, that little bit of joy, the little bit of positivity, look into the future and I say without Everton in the community I know quite a few lives wouldn't be quite as, as good as they are now and, and that's a massive thing for us and if we can keep changing lives year in year out and uh, keep doing the things we are, uh, everyone will be happy. Give them a bit of help when it's most needed and give them a bit of direction that probably in 20, 25, 30 years they'll look back and they'll see there's a key moment in their lives and I don't think there's anything better than that. We could never give up on supporting the community. I feel we will just increase the support that we give, particularly over the next 10 years. You know, it's, it's key to who we are. It's part of being an Evertonian, it's part of this club. So I could never imagine a time when we would be withdrawing services. You know, my, my vision and strategy is about further injection and support. With the power of football, we all feel extremely proud to see the results of, of Everton in the community and Merseyside.